Who's laughing now? Here's your look at the Cotopaquia Evil Dead 2 Dead by Dawn Ash Williams Horror Bishojo Statue. Packed with her trusty chainsaw, boomstick, and Necronomicon Ex Mortis, Ash Williams finally sees a light of day with the Horror Bishojo statue line. The very first thing we'll do is figure out how tall Ash Williams stands. Now you'll notice I'm going way, way past her head to actually the very top of her chainsaw. That will of course dictate how much space you need for this beautiful Bushojo statue when it comes time to put her on display. So starting and stopping my point right here, I can tell you, according to the Ultra Measuretron 5000, that Ash Williams stands at a rather impressive 10.8 inches in height, which in centimeters, flipping that right over, turns out to be about 28 centimeters, about 27, exactly 27.5 centimeters tall. The statue itself depicts Ash Williams standing atop of the flooring on the interior of the cottage, the cabin in which Evil Dead primarily takes place in. One thing that's really neat is that they've even got the hand, as you can see, sticking out from deep inside the cellar. Deep inside the cell, you know what's down there. But just that one little hand is the indicator that there's something troubling, troubling down below the in the basement dwelling. One thing I like is that they actually put real working chains. And you can see that the chains are looped inside the little looped points there on the cellar door. A nice touch. The discoloring coloring added to the uh, the gray coloring of the mask, or the I should say the hand, is really nicely done. And I'm hoping that the camera actually is going to pick that all up there. You can see also even like there's depth to the flooring, a nice touch as well. I do really like the th I do think that the hand sculpt is really quite nice. And like I said, I love the fact that they would have actually incorporated real chains. The flooring does give it the sense that it's textured wood. Uh, slightly different various shades of brown have been added to the mix. In a way, it does look like it's cascading its own shadowing. I know most of the, li the light is causing that effect, but they've added just a little bit of darker colorings around the outer area of the door and kind of kept the inner area, the middle section here of the door, on a lightly, slightly lighter shade. Again, the flooring looks really, really good. We tip it up very carefully, very gingerly, you can see there is the Necronomicon, Ex Mortis, which is roughly translated to, of course, the Book of the Dead. The Book of the Dead is not removable. It's affixed to the floor. I can't see why you would want to take it off anyways, because really you can't hold it in, Ash, in Ash's hand anyways. It does translate to, you see what I did there, to a really nice little replica of the book. Slightly a little bit more darker than I would have enjoyed. Uh, it is really, really dark. Like they've added like this wet coat, wet wash of paint to it. 
I kind of made a lot of the recessed areas a little bit too dark for my liking, but it's a small touch. This is just a little small accessory when you really look at the overall scope of the figure, which I guess we can really focus our attention on right now. The head sculpt on Ash, now portrayed here as a woman. Of course, all the Bishojo statues generally are taking the horror icons as a whole, or really just any characters from comics and film, translating it to a female character, posing as that same uh, title character. And Ash Williams here looks spectacular. I might even dare, dare as far as to say that it might actually be my favorite head sculpt from all the Bishojo statues that we've looked at on this channel. Now, I have extensively covered the Jason, the Freddy, the Chucky, and the Tiffany. I think the only one that I haven't picked up from a horror property likeness is the Edward Scissorhands, which some would debate would be a horror figure anyways. It's not really, some would say it's not really a horror character. Some people would say it would be, but that's the only one that I really haven't picked up. Of the ones, though, I have picked up, I have to say this is by, by far probably my favorite head sculpt, hands down. I like the little smirk that they've put into the face there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Hopefully the camera's going to do justice in this review. But you can see that there's even just a little bit of teeth showing. A little smirk. Loving the look of that. You can see that there's this big, horrible gash running through the mouth. And yet the face still remains really quite pretty. The hair, I love the way it's been tussled. And you can see like these little individual curls that are starting to escape the forehead and go off on their merry little way. This one specifically is the one that really stands out the most to me. Coloring on these are always vibrant. Kind of a, the approach of the paint really mirrors more like a pastel. Even like when you see the transitions of colors, the paints that they use anyways are more of a softer pastel color. Seldom you'll see very bright colors being used for these figures. And uh, again, like really loving the transitions of colors here between the lighter blue, almost borderline of violet purple, into the more darker areas in which the wrinkles you can see on the sides. The shirt is heavily soaked in blood. One, one nice little touch that I like is that the shirt has been tucked in to the very, very short shorts on Ash, but then you can see like the shirt has escaped its way out, started to untuck itself, and is draping out down the side of the leg. Again, very heavily ripped. You can see all these little scratches here. The shirt has been ripped away, exposing some other areas of the torso section of Ash. Even like the sleeve area here has been ripped away and you can see it's just been soaked, just drenched in this same similar blood that makes appearances quite frequently, in fact, around this figure. Of all the Bishojo statues, I think this one is the most blood soaked, equally and notably so. It really should be the most blood soaked for all the unfortunates that Ash has to deal with through the course of Evil Dead 1 and the sequel slash remake Evil Dead 2. Of course, you've got your chainsaw there attached to the hand. Nice rips away on there. Once again, the rips on the fabric. It's a very textured looking statue, which I think adds to the, the appeal of to why I like this statue so much. Again, probably one of my personal favorites. The blood looks natural. Blood can so quickly be faked and look really not realistic at all when it comes to some of the weapons that come included with figures. I really do like the blood the touchings of blood that they've added to the chainsaw blade. As you can probably guess that the chainsaw blade is one of the softest things that you have to worry about on this particular figure. Breaking and snapping could always be a plagued problem, so you want to be very careful when you are posing a figure. Certainly do not want that getting dropped or damaged. As we move along to the back there, we are now sporting a boomstick slid into the trusty holster there, which has been strapped around to the front and torso area of Ash. Once again, going back to those curls we were talking about before, loving the fact that the hair just has its own excitement and really has its own life happening there. It primarily looks like it's been painted in black. I don't see too much in the way of additional color that's been added to it, but that's perfectly fine. The light hits it in such a certain way that it almost feels like it's got a slightly purplish gray coloring to it. As we move again further down, we've got again a lot of scratches, little cuts there happening on the legs. 
despite for the fact that she does have so many rips, so many scratches, so many cuts, she still remains very, very pretty, very attractive. I guess the only thing I would have rather liked to see, as I just move my attention and the focus of the uh, camera's attention down to the boots, which as you can see are individually laced. You can see the little bows there on either side, little bunny ears happening on both sides. The boots look like they stick to really one color, although this side here gets a little bit more of a darker color on the front, but this side here looks like this one boot looks like it really only keeps to its one primary color only. Again, you spin around to the back there. Very, very short shirt, uh, shorts there. Some scratches there on the side. The only thing I really think that this statue could have worked well by doing was removing the boomstick. No, not in the sense that you could take it off, be able to put it back in, but maybe remove the boomstick and I would have had maybe the boomstick in her hand. Maybe she could have been holding it. Um, it's, of course, she's in a much more playful kind of pose than anything else. But I think maybe the boomstick in her hand could have gone a long way as well. Like she could have just been holding the boomstick like this, or she could have been pointing it down, and they could have rested it against the leg, attaching it to the side of the thigh, so that it wouldn't have to be a separate piece, something that would have to eventually break if you weren't too careful with it. Don't get me wrong, I do like the pose, but again, I think making use of the little boomstick there having this as something that could be taken out altogether and draped alongside her torso, I think it could have also added to it as well. I know eventually when it comes down to it, a lot of the Bishojo statues are really selling the prettiness, the attractiveness of the uh, characters in which they're being depicted of. But again, really fantastic, the fact that they're able to combine, we'll just put her down right here for a second, the fact that they're able to combine horror with beauty and giving us something that really happily marries both of them together. She's as gruesomely soaked in blood as she is pretty. A very successful feat, once again, from Kotobukiya. Now, the statue is not the newest of releases. It's been on my radar for a bit. Kind of had to wait for my local comic book store to finally stock it before I was able to get myself the Ash Williams Bushojo series statue from Kotobukiya. As you've probably seen in previous instances, previous reviews of these pieces on this channel, you know I'm a big fan of the Bashojo line. Collecting both DC and horror variety characters, the more they continue to release these, the more I anxiously wait to add these to my collection. I was very anxious to get an Ash Williams and finally add her along with the Freddy, the Jason, the Chucky and the Tiffany that I already have in my collection. I hope that Kotobukiya personally continues to release these as they are super, super cool, super gruesome, and yet still, like I said, very pretty looking renditions of horror characters as females. Uh, the Ash Williams, I think, works the best so far from what I've seen. Some of them have been questionable, some of the decisions that they made. I still think I like the Jason, for example, but still can't get past the fact that Jason's mask is slightly tilted off to the side. Kind of wish they had done something a little bit different from it, but that's not really what we're talking about in this review. We're talking about the Ash Williams. A really nice addition, like I said, to the existing Bashojo lineup. Good news is if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, it should be available now in local comic book stores. It's probably been around for a while in some comic book stores, but some stores may stock them accordingly. I know my local comic book store, for example, didn't stock this one initially because they didn't think there was going to be enough interest in her. <laughs> and yet they seem to forget that I was the customer at that store, probably wanting to pick this up as soon as it was released. And sure enough, as soon as it came to the store, I immediately picked it up and ran like a bandit. Which I might add to the register. I didn't run out the store. I didn't steal it or anything like that. Either way, though, today we were having a look at the Kotobukiya Evil Dead Bashojo series statue of Ash Williams. Now, I know while you were watching this review, you were hearing me say I covered the rest of the horror Bashojo statues. You haven't had a chance yet to check that out? Well, there's a whole playlist just for Kotobukiya. Primarily as well, the Bashojo lineups. I've looked at several Bashojo statues, uh, some DC, some Street Fighter, and of course the horror being the primary. So if you guys want to check out and have a look at my previous reviews, the playlists are there. Feel free to check them out. Also, hit that little subscribe button down below, certainly if you haven't done so already, as more reviews will be coming soon to this channel. Thanks for watching, as you always do, guys, and I'll see you next time.